everybody. So, my name is Jordan and today's video is going to be 25 life lessons I learned in 25 years. I recently turned 25, as you may have guessed. And this video is inspired by one of my favorite YouTubers, Jenna Marbles. She did a video called 29 life lessons I learned in 29 years. And then she did another one when she turned 30. And normally I do music videos every week, but I lost my voice from being sick, which is also why I have the camera so close because I can't talk a whole lot louder than this. I hope that this video is entertaining and maybe even helpful because I did try to put in some good life lessons, but also some funny things as well. So bear with me here as I have it written down on paper. I am very much a pen and paper person. So number one is drink water. So when I was a kid, I lived all over Seattle area, so there was a lot of driving involved as, you know, there's, there's just a lot of driving down there. So my dad, you know, he would always tell me, go to the bathroom before you leave the house so you don't have to go to the bathroom when we're driving. And for some reason, it just started to cause really bad anxiety for me and I started freaking out that I'd have to go to the bathroom while we were driving and my solution to that was to not drink fluids at all like i thought in my little brain my logic was like oh if i don't drink anything i don't have to pee problem solved well i ended up having to go to the doctor for a uti because i didn't drink water i was dehydrating myself really bad so my first life lesson is to drink water. Don't not drink water. It's not good. You need to drink water. <laughs> and then number two is a serious one. It's trust yourself. Oh, okay. So for this one, with trust yourself. The story about alcoholism that I'm mentioning is, is I, w I have a lot of alcoholics in my family and I was worried that I would become an alcoholic the minute I drink anything so I was really 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 scared to trust myself I didn't think that I could trust myself and as a result I didn't drink until this last year I didn't start drinking until I turned 24 years old and when I did start drinking it I learned that I actually could trust myself I do the fact that I waited until I was 24 years old shows me that I can trust myself so that was a lesson that I have learned is to trust yourself. Okay, so number three is don't try to be perfect or live a perfect life. I used to have really, really bad anxiety. It was terrible. And I'll give you a story, an example was I was trying to be environmentally friendly and zero waste and I'm online, right? And I'm thinking of all these different things that I need to work on to be zero waste. And so I was, it's simple enough. You think, oh, let me buy a pencil that is a environmentally friendly. I could not for the life of me even figure that out. I was on this website where the, I don't even remember what the pencil was made of. I think maybe it was like environmentally friendly wood and recycled rubber. I don't know. I don't remember, but I do remember thinking about what am I going to do with that little metal thing that connects the eraser and the pencil? How can I recycle that? And I was just freaking out. Like, about this one little piece of metal like that's how bad my perfectionism had gotten whereas like nothing was good enough and in that moment I realized I, I realized that it was bad you know like nothing would ever be perfect nothing was ever going to be perfect and it was a very real moment for me like it might sound stupid or ridiculous but for me realizing <laughs> I was having a mental breakdown over a pencil and the little metal part that connects it was an eye opener for me. So that was a life lesson I've learned. I'm still 
still trying to learn sometimes, you know, is you cannot be perfect and you cannot live a perfect life. Number four is kind of a weird one. It's more just like a, a story. It is a lesson for sure, but it's a story in and of itself. So it's do not put hamsters and gerbils together in the same cage. When I was a young kid, I had gerbils and hamsters, and I thought that they're both rodents. They can go in the same cage through logic, I don't know. And uh, that did not turn out well. The, the gerbil and the hamster got into it. I was sleeping when this happened. My hamster ate my gerbil. I woke up and the next day my dribble's face was gone. His stomach was ripped open into he was he was very dead. That didn't work out. So life lesson, do not mix rodents just because they're both rodents. It doesn't work. You really need to think about things before you do them. Number five is another funny story. So Number five is don't hold cats while closing a door. Again, when I was little, I had some kittens and I was holding one of my kittens on my chest like a baby and just carrying them around. And I went to close the sliding glass door. I did not realize how easy this door was going to close. And so I went to push on it really hard thinking it was gonna be heavy. It closed so easy, I slammed the door and it scared the bejesus out of my cat and it scratched into my chest. I still have a scar on my chest from when that happened. It's apparently always going to be there. So don't hold your cat while closing a door. You don't know what might happen. Number six will be a little more serious. It's embrace who you are. I didn't realize that people would like me for me because I had always felt bad for being myself for some reason. And then recently I found people who actually really like me for me and it, it was a surprise and that's why this lesson is on the list because I finally learned, you know, to embrace who I am and that people, there are people who will accept you for who you are and it is the greatest feeling ever to know that there are people in your life that love you for you. It's just amazing. So it's something that I would recommend if there's something to take from this, you know, is to embrace who you are because it's worth it. And then number seven is practice self-love and positive self-talk. It gets you so much farther than self-doubt and hate ever will. Well, for example, when I work out, all I do is do positive self-talk and it makes the biggest difference because our minds are so powerful. You know, our bodies can pretty much do anything. It's our minds that hold us back. So when I work out, I'm just constantly telling myself, I can do it, I can do it, you know, just things like that. And instead of working against yourself saying, oh, I can't do it, it's so hard, it's so hard. You know, you're making it harder by telling yourself it's hard. If you tell yourself it's easy, you can trick yourself and your body into thinking it's easy. It's mind over matter. So practice self-love and self positive self-talk. It makes a really, really big difference in all kinds of ways. Rather than fighting against ourselves, we're already climbing up a mountain. There's no need to try and push ourselves off. And that's how I would relate the positive self-talk, you know, is why not help ourselves instead of pushing ourselves in a bad way, you know. Number eight is allow yourself comfort without judgment. So what this means is when I had anxiety and depression and I was dealing with panic disorder things like that. Something I would do is I would constantly check the locks on the door 
even even though like okay you checked the lock the first time is locked but for whatever reason i was really stressed out and i just wanted to keep checking to see that it was locked and if that's what you gotta do then do it you know as if it's not hurting anybody and it's not hurting you allow yourself that space and that room to do things that make you feel more comfortable because eventually you will learn that trust. I know it might not make sense, but it's a process. So eventually, after allowing myself to check the locks over and over again, time after time, I was able to relax and have more ease. And slowly but surely, I was able to let go of that habit. But I had to allow myself to do it. Instead of beating myself, and look, oh, you don't, you shouldn't be doing that. You don't need to do that. Just give yourself that space. Let yourself have that comfort without judging yourself. It will help. And then number nine is invest in your self development. At the end of the day, this is your life and you are the one living with yourself until you die. Use your time and energy to grow and learn for the better not for anyone else except you. You are worth it. You deserve to live the best life you can. And the only way you can do that is by learning and trying. It will only make your life better. It's worth it. And then number 10 is read. Even if it's comic books, which is what I used to do. I, used, I had boxes and boxes of comic books. And it was just something I enjoyed. Reading can help you in so many ways. It can help you forget your worries, your troubles, whatever. And it can take you to a happy place or help you to get to a better place. Literally, by helping you gain knowledge and skills to do so. Number 11 is do not be patient or lenient when it comes to how you allow others to treat you. So, life is too short to let people... Uh, treat you any less than you deserve. Do not waste your time or energy on people who don't value you. It might be scary or painful at first, but your life will be so much better when you surround yourself with people who value you and treat you right. So don't waste your time being patient with people if they aren't treating you right. Number 12 is a funny story so it's don't let friends be the middleman when it comes to relationships so this story goes back to when I was little again oh I think I was in second grade or something and I had a crush on this guy and my friend somehow convinced me to let her be the middleman for some reason and so she she was setting me up and I didn't really realize it. So what happened is is I I wrote him a note or something telling him that I liked him and there ended up being correspondence between I thought it was him and I, but really what it was is it was my friend writing me back. And it just kinda got crazy and eventually she ended up telling me, she's like, Oh yeah, it's me. I was like, wow, okay. I didn't really know what to do with that. That was crazy. So that's a bit of advice I'd recommend. Do not let your friends be the middleman for you in relationships. It's just better either don't do anything or do it yourself. Because bad things can happen when you let someone else do things for you. Uh, number 13, also another self-deprecating story. Um, if you are ever constipated, try Epsom salt. One time in high school, I was very backed up and it was painful. It was so, so painful. I, I had never had this much pain before. I'd never had this issue, so I was very desperate. And my stepmom ended up telling me, oh, maybe, maybe try 
drinking some Epsom salt water. So I did, it was super gross, so, so nasty. But I did, and then I had to go to church right after, because this was like, I got home from school, and then I had this problem, and then I drank the Epsom salt water, and then I went to church for youth group. I went to the church to go to youth group, but I did not attend the youth group. I ended up being in the bathroom the entire time. It was awful, but it worked. It worked really well. So if you are ever constipated, drink Epsom salt water, but only do it if you really need to. I would not recommend that as a regular thing. I've only done that once in my life. I hope I never have to do it again. Number 14 is <clears throat> try keeping an ongoing journal or notebook between you and a friend. Or even just taking the time to write a letter one time can make a huge difference in your relationship. Writing gives you space and time to think or brainstorm, reflect, and edit what you say before you talk to the other person. And you can communicate so much better that way as a result. And it allows the other person the same. And so in the end, you both get much better results with communicating via writing than in person conversations. It can definitely be beneficial. It makes hard things to talk about even easier. Number 15 is learn compassion. Um, compassion for yourself and for others. Compassion brings understanding, which brings empathy, which brings peace, which in the end helps you because you have peace in your heart. So for example, my dad taught me when I was little to not judge a book by its cover because hurt people hurt others. So I had had a bully growing up in elementary school and I kept what my dad told me in mind and I just, I had compassion for her. I chose to think about it in a way where I thought of her as a hurt person and that's why she was hurting me. So I had compassion for her and I, I had nothing but compassion for her the entire time we went through elementary school, and then the last year of elementary school, she wrote in my yearbook, I was not expecting this, because we, we were never friends, we didn't become friends, I just was nice to her when I could be, and in my yearbook, she ended up telling me that she recognized that, and she noticed that, and it made a difference, and she was really happy that I treated her the way that I did, and that she was sorry for how she treated me, and... I just think that's a really great, great thing that happened as a result of compassion. So that was a life lesson that I've learned and I will keep with me. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, number 16 is always wear a bike helmet. Now, I have gotten some new information, but I'm still going to share this story just because I can and I want to. But um, I would say always wear a bike helmet. Uh, there is a story I have, but I was riding my bike as a young teen. I don't even know if I was a teenager, but I was riding my bike, and I didn't have my helmet on, and long story short, I ended up crashing, and not only did I just crash and just scrape my knees or anything, you know, like, oh, got hurt a little bit, I knocked myself out, like, completely blacked out. And I had a really bad concussion. If I remember correctly, I was out of school for about a month. Like my eyes swelled shut. I used to wear glasses. I couldn't even put my glasses on because it was so swollen. It was like the size of an egg. And I hit the back of my head. I did not hit the front of my face. I hit the back of my head so hard and my eyes swelled shut. And I couldn't go to school. And that was because I didn't wear my helmet. So I would say it, or, you know, instead of saying wear helmet, I would say practice safety. Do your best to practice safety. Learn, you know, before whatever it is you're going to do. Learn what you can do to try and be safe and then do that. And then number 17 is be careful going down slides. Or maybe just be careful with your fingers in general. <laughs> I have hurt my fingers so many times over my life 
so far. I um, have this weird little scar, right? I don't know, it looks like an imprint, but that's actually a scalpel scar. I, in eighth grade, was doing a science class and we were doing some, some like experiment on chicken breast to see how muscles function and stuff. And the scalpels had little plastic sheets on them, but the scalpels weren't being cleaned and dried in between. So basically it was scalpels covered in chicken breast guts. And then we'll we're just slide this plastic thing on it and it's really hard to get on and off. So I saw that and I thought to myself, I should be careful. I don't want to stab myself somehow trying to get this lid off. So I was trying to think how I was gonna take it off like flat or side. I ended up going for the sides, I think, hoping that I could just pull it off really slow and careful because I was afraid if I did it flat that I would uh, that it would come off really easy and it go the, the force kicking back would just stab me in the hand. But it didn't end up mattering anyways because I pulled it off slow, or I don't know, I was trying to go slow, but all the chicken stuff on it made it really hard to get off. And I ended up pulling it off and exactly what I was worried was gonna happen happened. It sliced right into my finger. And then I had to get stitches. The original story that I was talking about, be careful going down slides as in elementary school. I was sliding down one of those old metal slides and like I was trying to get ready to, you know, jump off the slide and run around and do it again. And so I grabbed the bottom of the slide and my pinky got stuck in something somehow, like the welding and it ripped my fingernail off. And then uh, another one more fingernail story. <laughs> was I was slicing uh, potato skins off for Thanksgiving and somehow, instead of the potato, I just sliced my fingernail off. So life lesson is be careful with your fingers. And my, oh, one more, one more, one more finger story. My own dad could learn from this lesson. He, he's missing his finger looks like this. It looks like that. His, his finger got ripped off in a conveyor belt when he worked for Coca-Cola. So I would definitely recommend be careful with your fingers. Don't take them for granted. They're apparently very prone to injury. Um, number 18, don't try to sneak out when it's snowing or has snowed. When I was in high school, I tried to sneak out of the house when it was snowing. I thought it was gonna keep snowing and it would cover up my snow tracks. It did not keep snowing and it was very clear evidence that I left the house and then came back. So yeah, there's a life lesson. If you wanna hide evidence, don't go out in the snow. <laughs> Or at least make sure it's like some heavy storm and it will continue to snow even after you get back. Because if you come back and your tracks are there and it stops snowing, your tracks coming back, it's not going to make sense. And then number 20 is find hobbies you enjoy. They make life interesting and fun and can benefit you in more ways than one. Nice rhyme. Um, let's see, a sea story about me realizing I love energy saving. Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, this is going to be a funny story. I realized that I really like saving energy when I had this moment when I was trying to figure out how to get my energy bill as low as possible. And basically what ended up happening is, is I was like, trying not to live in my house. I was like, I should go outside more often so I'm not in the house. And we could just, you know, <laughs> be in the backyard all the time. And I'm like, wait, what am I doing? Why am I, why, why would I do that? You know, you pay rent to live in a house. I'm gonna like, spend most of my time in the backyard to avoid a high energy bill. <laughs> like, it was just a funny moment where like, okay, might have taken this hobby a little too far, Jordan, but 
It is fun. I still like doing the energy saving. I just, I'm not going to camp out in my backyard <laughs> to avoid using the energy in my house, you know. But it, it does make sense, you know, if you're not in the house, you can't use energy. So, you know, it's a good point. <laughs> and then, uh, number 21, don't drink bourbon like it's water. You will black out. <laughs> in all realness, actually real advice I would give is don't rush into drinking. Again, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't start drinking until a year ago when I was 24. And there's just no need to rush into drinking. If you don't want to, you don't even ever have to drink for your whole life. But it's just waiting until you're ready is helpful for your health in the long run because if you are only drinking because other people are drinking you are just damaging your body unnecessarily and if you drink when you want to chances are you're going to practice moderation so much more and then you'll be healthier for it as a result so i would recommend not rushing into drinking and then number 22 is keep a list of things you are thankful for and try to always recognize things to be thankful for for every day when you can. It makes a really big difference in your morale. You could be in prison and still be the happiest person alive. It's all a matter of mindset. It doesn't matter your circumstances, what's happened to you, Anything, all that matters is just your mindset. And that is completely up to you. And that's totally within your control. So why not take advantage of that and practice being grateful and having a positive mindset? And number 23, I have as create a mantra for yourself. A simple reminder that grounds you and helps you focus. Something that helps you to live by you know to live your life by for a long time mine was be the change you want to see in the world but now I think it switched over more to something uh, it's a, a saying amor fati I don't know if I'm saying it right but it's amor fati which means love of faith and to me that means embracing everything that happens and making the most of it no matter what because life will never be perfect like I've said earlier you know life will never be perfect or exactly how we want it to be or how we like it to be so it's best to make the most of what we have and then almost done two more we're on number 24 is realize that perfection is the enemy of good so the lesson would be is do good, not perfect. Perfection keeps us from even getting things started or done. It's a lesson that I'm still learning, but it's actually part of why I started this channel because I want to force myself to get stuff done, which gets me out of that perfectionism because perfectionism for the longest time has stopped me from starting and it's kept me from finishing because I want to be perfect and it, it's paralyzing but doing good instead of perfect allows you get to get stuff done so that's why I'm doing this YouTube channel part of it you know just so to work through that to get things done to put out my videos regardless to just get past that perfectionism mindset so do good not perfect and then the last one is rest Rest is just as important as productivity. Again, it's a lesson I'm still learning, but it's finally at least made more at the forefront of my mind now. I was taught how to work hard, but I wasn't really taught how to rest, you know, and or shown the importance of rest and recovery. But now I'm learning rest and recovery is just as important as working hard. You can't really work hard 
or do your best or be your best self if you're burnt out and tired or lacking energy from not resting. So my last lesson I would say is to let it sink in that resting is a priority and it is good. It's just as good and as important and valuable as working hard is. And that was my 25 life lessons that I've learned in the last 25 years. I hope that this was entertaining for you or that you smiled, laughed maybe, or that maybe you did take some life lessons from it. And um, let me know in the comments anything that you have learned in your life that you would like to share or what was your favorite part of the video. And if you did enjoy this, I make videos every Friday. Oh, thanks for watching the video. I make videos every Friday. And make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, push the notifications so you don't miss any new videos as I post videos every Friday. And I'll see you guys next week.